Welcome to RSA Conference 2024. We're here recording live from Broadcast Alley in Moscone West. I'm your host, Adrian Sanabria, and joining me today is John Check, VP of uh, Cyber Protection Solutions at Nightwing. Welcome, John. Thank you, Adrian. Good delight to be here. So the uh, possibly the largest cybersecurity company you haven't heard of, right? <laughs> Highly yeah. likely. Yeah, tell us, uh, so Nightwing, tell, uh, great name, by the way. Well, the, it, we, you know, the, our teams love the name. Yeah. And they, they couldn't wait to get their hands on swag. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I've done some marketing, branding work in the past. Uh, I could have a lot of fun with Nightwing. Yes, yes, <laughs> absolutely. Yeah, so we, uh, we're a standalone entity as of April 1st, so great day for a launch for a cyber company, right? Yeah. April Fool's <laughs> Day, right? Might as well. Yeah. Um, and have a, it, it, so we spun out from Raytheon. Mm -hmm. It's really the cybersecurity intelligence business that Raytheon provided to government, state and local, and commercial entities is what we provide, so the services-related activities. All right, yeah, that's, um, yeah, it's interesting because it's, uh, you know, it's not something we hear a lot about, mm -hmm. you know, uh, the, the services provided. Is that considerably different than like the way you deliver the services, uh, the way you sell to them, is that significantly different than the private side? It, it absolutely is. So it, part of what spun out is we have 2,200 employees strong, 1.3 billion in revenue. So wow. right, <laughs> not, not tiny. But yeah, it's a very different way we're selling because also we're selling into a lot of intelligence and other missions that really keep our nation safe. So mm -hmm. it's a way different uh, the way we approach the marketplace which is right, we obviously lead with our teams, right? Our people are what make us great. They are committed to the missions. They're committed to their, their growing their career and, and learning more and really uh, defending our nation. So it really makes it really special for us. Yeah. And definitely mission oriented. There. 100%. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I'd say, so we're so mission oriented, you know, most cyber companies have a problem with attrition, right? right. We're, we're in single digits. and. There's really? a lot. Of, there's a lot of factors that go into that, yeah. but certainly mission well, is a big I'll driver. I'll ask more about that later. That, that's that's very interesting. Um, so, cyber protection solutions. You know, what what is that? Uh, help me understand what that so it's, is. It's really it's all things defensive cyber. I mean, okay. we we I, my team goes from the uh, a, a pen test all the way to standing up nation state cyber capabilities and everything in the middle. Okay. So we really provide the whole spectrum of services, which is, makes it great, and across all different customer sets. Mm -hmm. um, you know, the, the uh, interesting, right, every every uh, customer is unique, but they all have the same problems. Right. And it's really figuring out how to ensure that we're bringing the right things to bear to help them. So it sounds like uh, not only services, but also maybe building some uh, some custom tooling, you know, some research folks, some development folks. Absolutely, we do a lot of integration work, right? One of the, the okay. key challenges all of our customers have is Right, they bought one of everything and have a hard time integrating those tools, capabilities into something that actually provides them the, the mm -hmm. cyber defense they're looking for. So we really help in the architecture, the integration, and really bring the people that are hard to find. That's one yeah. of the, you know, our customers lose their key, you, you name the tool person, and they can't rehire that person. It makes it really hard, but we have a, you know, a deep group of resources that can really help them. Yeah. So this industry has evolved a lot over the years, and you know, as, as we see RSA and, and the industry grow, you know, we were just talking about the, the vastness of the expo area. Um, you know, also so of the breaches. You know, so so of the you know the negative consequences that we've seen. What 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 do you think is missing there? What what is uh, uh, you know what 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 are some of the key stuff that you find actually work with your customers and and uh, that maybe other folks are missing. Well, I think the number one thing we try to help our customers is help them build capacity. Because hmm. that's what they all need, right? There's not, they'll never be able to hire enough people. Yeah. They'll never be able to, to really look at all the events they want to and take action they'd like to. So True. really, we focus on trying to create capacity for them. And not capacity in the sense of more people. Really capacity in the sense of automation or get rid of, get, you know, you take a KonMari approach, right? Get rid of the clutter. Get rid of those tools you're never going to use anyway. Yeah. And just don't use, you know, make, you know, focus your environment on what's really important to you versus trying to do one of everything. And that yeah. helps you unlock capacity to really focus on the core of your business. So uh, more of a less is more. That yeah. and, and, and uh, you know, ruthless automation. I mean, all the talks around AI, but that's just a, that's just a portion of it, right? Really, one of the keys to unlocking capacity is you've got to automate the, the routine. Yeah. 
Yeah, it's something we've definitely observed. Uh, a lot of the tooling out there creates busy work. Yeah, uh, for, <laughs> absolutely. For people who are operators <laughs> of the tools. But mm-hmm. that's not really doing security, right? No. It's just filling their day with another yeah. box to look at or <laughs> things to check or something to read, right? It doesn't really help them hone in on why they're there when that is defending the business. Yeah. So back to the, uh, you're talking about your retention rate and, and certainly... Uh, you know, just just talking about my observations, I've mentored a lot of folks in the field. I've been in, in cybersecurity for over 20 years. And, uh, you know, a lot of them say that there's positions uh, for minimum three to five years. You know, but you know, they ask me, where's the zero to three? Where's the zero to five? You know, right. where, where's the junior level? And I, I generally come back to telling them to, you know, get a job on the IT side and move laterally over. You know, because IT is who's actually doing security anyway. That's right. That's where I started. Yeah, right, right. (laughs) And that, you know, I I felt like an old man, you know, telling people to do it the way I did. You know, I also came through through IT. You know, I I started thinking, okay, maybe there is uh, an entry-level cybersecurity role. Uh, You know, we, for some reason, pen testing is one of those, and then also SOC analyst. And, uh, but, but... Yeah, re- retention, how do we get people into the field? You know, so a couple questions there. Let, let's start with uh, retention since you mentioned that earlier. You know, uh, obviously a mission-focused company. You know, is, is, is that it or is there more oh, to no, it Oh, no, there's that? absolutely more to it. Because okay. the, 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 the uh, hard part about retention problem is it's multifaceted like most hard problems mm-hmm. are. So it's the, you got to have something that excites people. They want to come to work to every day and feel like they're accomplished something or it's for a higher purpose. Yeah. So I think on a lot of our, uh, the work that we provide absolutely answers that. Uh, also, you have to focus on the employee's well-being, right? Yeah. One of the key things that really is concerning is, you know, cyber, when events happen, it's a, you know, you're up 24, 36, however many hours and yeah. working super hard, highly stressful, you got, the leadership of the company asking you every 20 minutes as you know what you're working on and if I wasn't right the response is well if I'm not so busy giving you reports I would be getting the job done right, right so yeah. the liaison so really the well-being ensuring people have the time to really um, uh, refresh and reload mm-hmm. and and really retool and, and, and learn new skills outside of their day-to-day so we really focus a lot on that aspect yeah and then the uh, obviously you have to be competitive when it comes to to benefits, mm-hmm. but you really got to take a an approach of you know we're all in this cyber fight together, so you know one of the approaches I take is you know no matter if somebody wants a, a new opportunity on one of our programs, a new opportunity within Nightwing or an opportunity outside of Nightwing, I'm going to support them. Yeah. Because the only regrettable attrition for me is when somebody leaves cyber. Right. Right. That is the only time it's regrettable. <coughs> Yeah, and it's uh, it's always been baffling to me, you know, the the thought that you know I don't want to send somebody to training because what if they leave, you know? It's the, sh- surely you guys have opportunities Hear that all for the time. advancement internally, but um, but yeah, I mean, I mean, a company that that is interested in your well-being, you know, your career, regardless of whether it continues to be at Nightwing or absolutely you know, go, go somewhere else. Um, yeah, I, I, I mean, I would want to stay at a company that, that does that. It freaks people out yeah. a little bit. Yeah. Right? Oh, yeah? Because well, I mean, most people, they don't want to have to go to their their supervisor, manager, leader and say, you know, I'd really like to move on to something else because they think that they would be perceived as wanting to leave the program. Mm-hmm. It's way easier to go out and find a new job and say, here's my offer letter for my new company, I'm leaving. Yeah. Versus having a difficult conversation. We try to break down that barrier of having those conversations that are really focused on a career in cyber. And I think that that's what ultimately helps drive our retention. So it's kind of strange Well, you would support people to move on, but yeah. they want to stay more. Right, right. <laughs> yeah, and I, I, I mean, it, it benefits both, right? Absolutely. Yeah. So <coughs> coming back to the, the uh, talent pipeline, you know, this is something we, we keep hearing that uh, companies can't hire all the cyber workforce that they want, <laughs> um, you know, and, and, and then everyone I know trying to get into the, into the industry or trying to get jobs, you know, it, it sounds like the people that, that companies are looking for either don't exist or aren't there yet. You know, they, they want a certain level of expertise, but they're not willing to build it or, or grow it. They're right, not willing right. to build up. So that that's my observation, at, at least. Like, like, what are you seeing there, and, and how do you think 
uh, you know, obviously a company your size can afford to build a pipeline, I would think, mm -hmm. a, a, a talent pipeline. But um, what should companies be doing if, if they want to be able to, you know, if they, if they want to be able to staff the way they want to, uh, like, at what size do you get when it makes sense to build that talent pipeline and right. ensure your own, you know, future? Well, for us, based on our legacy, right, we, we really ran into this problem early stages of COVID, right, where mm -hmm. it was really talent, right, was extremely high. Yeah. There was a high level of, uh, of competition there. So we just took the approach that we're going to manufacture the talent we need. Yeah. And so we created our offensive labs, Nightwing offensive labs, to where we're taking the, the work that we do within our offensive side of the business and training our defenders on it so they can think like an attacker Mm -hmm. and really taking through people up to uh, eight to 16 weeks, depending on where they are in their skill set, right? We tailor that, that training to those skills that they need, but we bring people in. So for example, we've had really good success bringing in uh, people uh, exiting the military. Yeah. Because mm -hmm. they come out, well, obviously with some of the clearances we need. Right. Uh, so yeah. that's a win there for us as well, yeah. to really train them to provide the exact type of support we need on some of the missions we have. And they're not going to come, we know they're not going to come out from anywhere that, I mean, we, we know that talent pool. We know that it's limited. You don't come out of a, a university, college, or a higher education with those skills unless yeah. you are doing it out of your own interest. Right. But so we, we so we take a purposeful approach to invest in our talent, and we don't live in, in our fears. Right. Okay. If they they take the training and they leave, we're not gonna we can't we can't be fearful of that. Yeah. Right. We just do everything we can to ensure they have, you know, the greatest opportunities with us when it comes to training and career and uh, obviously we don't have limitless opportunities like any other company Mary, we, we go out and fight hard for the work we get yeah yeah so so taking veterans uh, do you also have like uh, internships absolutely like so yep. we do, so we take our interns through our offensive labs in the summer okay they love that because they've never seen anything like some of the stuff <laughs> that yeah. we take them through so that's part of it we even do high schoolers take them through that oh very so nice. it's so we're trying to hit it in all aspects of the career and then uh, you know you know, hit on it unfortunately uh, most of those entry-level jobs are in the commercial business. That's one of yeah. the reasons we have it is to provide those SOC analysts and others. But while they're doing that, we really work hard. Um, and it's a give and take between us and, and, our, and our team member to create that training curriculum for them to grow their skills. Because, you know, if, if so, we don't want a SOC analyst to be in, in that role more than two years. We want them to move to that next step. Yeah, so... so Beyond Nightwing, you know, what, what do you think uh, people should be doing there? You know, what, what do we need to do uh, for the workforce uh, as a whole? Like, like, do you think that's a model other people can copy and, and, and do as well? Or Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, it's all, it, it comes down to people know when you're genuine or not. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so it's really interesting. The conversation I had would lead me to believe most people are just concerned about their own program, business area, companies, retention. Mm -hmm. And when you focus on doing things like that, you're really not solving the problem. You, what, do, what do people care about? They care about learning new skills. They care yeah. about having uh, benefits and compensation that's going to help you know, make their family and uh, us secure. Right. They care about having career advancement. So if you're not having discussions around all three of those things, that's, mm -hmm. what, that's what it comes down to, just regular old communication. Picking yeah. up the phone or having an old-fashioned face-to-face meeting with somebody and say, hey, what, what, what do you really want to do? <laughs> Every now and then I hear about companies where employees feel comfortable talking about, well, I'm thinking of leaving the company, going to here, doing, you know, and that, that's just alien to me. The, the places I've been, you have to sneak around and... I have those do, conversations regularly. Do job interviews on your lunch break and, <laughs> and, uh, and yeah, you know, it, it occurs to me, you know, why, you know, it's no secret that employees are going to leave. You know, it's it like why, you know, why have to do all that in the shadows? And, and uh, you know, managers aren't hearing the issues, it's you know, the, the reasons that, that people are leaving. Uh, those are conversations they should feel comfortable having. Well, it's right? really it's really funny. Re recently uh, on LinkedIn, somebody hit me up and said, hey, I'm talking to this person. I heard they left. And I said, well, they haven't left yet. But what you know, I think they're a wonderful person. They'd be great on your team. Yeah. And he was freaked out, never responded to me, <laughs> never came back. So you know, not only the employees, but the people that are out there, he, was, he, he couldn't believe that I possibly think they probably thought, well, yeah. this person must not be good because John's trying to uh, get rid of him, right? When I wasn't, yeah. I genuinely wasn't. Yeah. <laughs> uh, that, that's, 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 so it goes both ways. Yeah. 
Yeah, yeah. So it's uh, hopefully we can get to a better place there, and uh, and and we need it to build this industry to 100%. to build the workforce up. Uh, so yeah, yeah. Ho- hopefully people are inspired by what you're doing, and uh, yeah, congrats with uh, with Nightwing. Oh, we're super excited. Yeah. And thanks for joining me on uh, Security Weekly. Well, thanks, today. Adrian. Pleasure. Uh, to learn more about Nightwing, you can visit securityweekly.com forward slash Nightwing RSAC. And uh, you can check out all our RSA coverage at securityweekly.com forward slash RSAC. And we'll be back with another interview in a few moments.